Hey there and welcome back to the 12 days of Christmas watercolor challenge for day seven. I'm actually recording this uh, tutorial on Thanksgiving so I hope you guys are having or did have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your families if you celebrate that. Also just want to say thank you so much for joining me throughout this challenge. Also if you are a subscriber to my YouTube channel thank you so much. I'm incredibly grateful for this community. It, uh, you all mean a lot to me so thank you so so much for joining me and I hope you guys are finding or getting a lot of um, a lot of joy a lot of um, great tips out of this challenge uh, just finding a lot of good value out of it so that is my hope today we are painting a beautiful snowy cabin scene I think we all kind of dream of escaping to a cabin in the winter time just to cozy up and today is going to be that type of vibe. I'm going to just start by using a medium pointed round brush. We'll do some snowy pine trees, um, some more focused in the foreground and then in the background here um, some more like really out of focus trees and a misty sky and snowy um, foreground here. So let's first begin by painting in our cute little A-frame cabin. And I'm actually going to make mine red since it's a holiday themed challenge. Why not? Let's do a little cute A-frame in red. So I'll just grab my red paint and start to lay in that first base color. Being careful to paint around the um, little porch up top here, those railings. I think I'll probably make that more like a wood tone. And so I'll just leave that. And the inside of our cabin uh, roof here, I'll also make that a, a wood tone. Just wanted to do something a little bit more fun. I think it was a couple years ago when I was writing this challenge, I think I did a red A-frame then too. So if you're looking for another cozy cabin uh, painting, uh, that one is another great one. So again, I'm just going to continue with this red using a medium amount of paint and not too much water. I don't want it to run everywhere. So this is obviously a pretty small painting on a 5 by 7 so I don't want it to run everywhere. I'm just going to kind of paint around oops, with really fine lines. And I will definitely go through and add in a little bit of depth. So it's not one flat red color. So this little pile right here is actually going to be a log wood pile. I'm gonna put some right here. All right, so let's add a little depth to that. I'm just going to grab my red and mix a little bit of brown. So here I have my burnt sienna color. So it's just gonna make it a little bit of a reddish brown. And then I think I'll add a little bit of the darker brown that I have on my palette. So this is the burnt umber. And I'm going to just Get rid of a little bit of that on my brush and add that in up top here. It just needs to be a little more um, shadowed in some of those areas up top. So I'll go ahead and get rid of a little bit on my brush there and bring that same color down along where the roof line is and over the porch maybe down under here too just something so it's not one flat red all right next let's work on the uh roof so the roof i think i'll just do it in a kind of that dark uh Payne's gray color it's always a really pretty color for a roof. Kind of brings in that cool snowy vibe. 
And we'll use a lot of this color in our trees because of all that snow and misty forest. So I'm just going to paint a little bit around the trees here. I'm not going to paint that little line. I guess you could call that like a soffit maybe, the trim. I don't know what I'll paint that as yet. I'm gonna make that like the actual wood accent color. Okay, working our way down. Like that. And while I have that color on my brush, I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit on my brush and dab my um, dab a little water onto it. That's what's going to make up our windows. So again, I will use the bleed proof white to create the accents of the white trim. You could always use a darker color if you don't have that paint. But I'm just going to paint in. This is kind of what I do for house portraits too, is I'll just paint in the window and then I'll go back through and add the trim. And let's drop in a little bit more variety of blue, so any other blue that you have in your palette, just kind of drop that into the window. Uh, looks like we have a little bit. Let's grab that light amount again for our door window here. And then another little bit of blue. And drop that in. So I know that looks kind of messy, but once you add in the details, it'll really change it. All right. So let's work on, since I still have a wet area up top here, I don't want to paint anywhere around that until it's dry. Um, so let's go ahead and do our, our wood pile. I do need to switch to a smaller brush for the wood pile. So here's one that's a little bit smaller, get our brush nice and wet, and then I'm going to use a mixture of yellow ochre with a little bit of the burnt umber to create that light tan wood color. And so then you just kind of do little circles. And we'll go back through with a little bit of a darker brown to help define some of those logs that are sitting right here in this pile. Let's grab a little bit of brown. And then just kind of run your brush and create circles around those little blobs and they might blend, but it's just creating a nice kind of idea of logs there. A little bit of the white speckles could represent the snow that's falling on it. Alrighty, let's now, if you have a dry roof, let's grab a little bit of the browns. So here I have that burnt umber and I'll just add a little water to that so it makes it a little lighter and that's what we will use some type of medium color brown for the trim accent so I'll just paint in that we'll do one coming down this way might need to pick up more water All right, there's that part of it. And we'll do even a darker brown um, for like underneath the roof and on the porch. Let's use that same trim color to do our little fence, not a fence, a railing. Kind of come across there and down. Oops, and I forgot this little part right here. All right. 
So now it's time for the darker brown. So grabbing our same brown, but now we'll add a little of that paint's gray to it. And that's what I'll do for under here. That one got pretty dark, so if you need to warm it back up, just grab more brown. We can just add a little bit of warmth. Again, I'm trying to be really careful not to run it into any wet areas so it doesn't run too much. And working our way down. And then I'll also work my way across on the porch. Feel free to turn your watercolor paper if you need. And just fill in that little piece right there. The other thing that is helpful to help um, just show another little shadow is to run that dark color right along the edge of that trim. So it's already starting to really pop. And again, if you want to define those logs even more, just grab some of that darker brown. And now that they're kind of dry, if you paint little circles, they should stay. All right, here's our cute little cabin. Again, um, I am going to add in, normally I'll do this at the very, very end of a painting, but why not? I'll just do it right now since we can finish up this little cabin. So grabbing the Bleed Proof White and a really tiny liner brush. Again, if you want, pull it off onto your palette and spin that brush. That really helps to uh, make it a nice pointed tip. And we'll just paint our grid lines of our windows and the trim on the outside. And then going up and across like that. See how much that really helps to create some detail. And I will do the same thing on this front door. If you got messy like me, I'll just kind of clean up the edges since this is a white door. Like that. And I do want to add a little grid in here. We'll see how great I can do this really skinny detail. Like that. And then two going across. That worked out pretty well. And let's see, any little final details? You need a little door handle, so I'll use a little bit of that Payne's Gray. Create a nice little dark door handle. And let's add, now that I'm looking at it, a little bit of depth into our railing here. So I'll just run a dark line on the side and below. That helped that kind of come to the forefront a little bit more. Maybe one more line right underneath the porch. All right, that looks good for our cute little cabin. Now let's do the snowy scene, the snowy nature forest. And um, let's start with our detailed trees in the foreground. I'll just switch to my size four, a little bit bigger brush. We are going to be using mixes of the Payne's gray and green. To get that nice dark green color 
as well as some browns for the trunk and um, maybe even some lighter blues too. But let's grab that nice dark green. And we are just going to start to paint in the branches and kind of working and showing the branches kind of swooping down. So pretend or visualize um, really heavy snow and how that snow sits on those branches and pulls them down like that. That's kind of what we want to see. And we can drop in, again, some darker color. I'm leaving little bits because I kind of want to make sure that I can see the snow, which obviously is in the whites. And I just want to use a little bit of the white of the paper to show that. So I'm just working my way down with that same dark green mixture. And you can even layer it over our, um, our cabin here. And coming down. Try to even bring some right in front of that trunk, even though we'll paint that trunk in very soon. There's something that looks a little more on the natural side, like that. So this is all I have right now, kind of a striped tree like that. Next, let's paint in the trunk. So I'm grabbing my brown, but I want to make it more of a gray brown. So here's my burnt umber with a little bit of that Payne's gray. And that gray, it's more of that gray. Now let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good, I'd say. So anything that feels more in the gray colors. Um, you could even add some Payne's gray on top. And then just kind of show some of that going up. It might grab some of the green, but as long as you can kind of see the brown, that's really what you want to see. And you can even do a few little pieces with the tips of your brush to show some branches coming out. But again, a lot of that white is going to be preserved for snow. All right, so that's what I have right now. And to show the snow, I want to grab a really light amount of blue. So I have this light bright blue as well as a little bit of a Payne's gray mixture. So it's now kind of a grayish light blue. I don't need a lot on my brush. And again, the green might be still kind of damp for you. And that's okay. What I want to do is just add in little specks of blue and that's going to start to create that idea that the snow is sitting on those branches and then to try and lighten up some areas just take your wet brush and start to dab and smooth them into that other part so it's not quite so stark and then once that dries one of my favorite things to do to add more snow texture is by adding this bleed proof white on top so let's let that tree just be and work on our other tree in the forefront kind of the same idea with the greens and the paint's gray and showing downward hanging branches and working a little bit faster this time since I kind of know my design from the other one I kind of like just the look of that simple tree there. 
might just let that be for now and just see how that, since it's a little bit farther into the background, doesn't need quite as much detail. Um, but I do need to go back through and add in the trunk. So here's that grayish brown. So I'll add that there and hit a few spots going up. So yeah, I think I'll leave that one as is and not add anything else to that. Super simple. Um, but even more so in the background here, that's what's going to be even um, more simple. And working our way back, it's going to get a little bit lighter. Oops, that's not the blue I want to mix. I want this more like ultramarine blue. I'm going to add that into that greenish Payne's Gray mixture that I have. And we'll use a variety of that, but I don't need a whole lot on my brush. Mostly water, a little bit of that paint. And that's what we're going to use just to kind of show the tips of our trees here to kind of create our horizon line back there. And then working our way down, I'm just going to press and dab and let a little bit of white show but otherwise, a lot of it is just going to be a wet on wet technique. So grabbing even a little bit more of that paint, dropping it in in places that we were just painting. And again, working our way down. Just doing a little splotch. And again, drop it in if you need to. Just let that kind of do its thing. working in our blues and our greens. So I'll just drop in a little bit more, but we want it to be not quite so um, green, just based on the atmosphere, um, what's closest and farthest away in our painting. You can even take your brush and kind of scoop up some of that just to help blend it and make it lighter just to kind of give the illusion that those are trees in the background okay let's do the same thing again for this side just kind of using a lot more water a little less paint and dropping it in to our background So there's my foresty, snowy background. Now let's paint the snow up front here. That is going to be more in the blues. So here I have my French ultramarine blue. So any ultramarine blues that you have, I again want to try and make that a little bit of a grayish blue. So grabbing a little bit of the Payne's Gray and very light amount on my brush. Let's just start where it could be the darkest, which is kind of right underneath where our cabin is. And run pieces along shadowed areas. And especially back here. And right along up top here. So here I have Kind of the look of the snow and I'm going to work my way to the forefront here of just doing little fun textured mounts, mounds of snow and leaving the whites of the background or of the paper and just play with a, a variety of blues. You can even drop some in. It's a really fun technique is just to use water, paint it on your, um, brush it on your paper and then drop in some more blue. All right. So this is definitely just like a quick study on how to paint a snowy scene, but I think that's, let me just grab this, just to show how that little bit of snow gives the essence of that. Working into the forefront, and you could even do little steps like this, 
like you had walked up to the front door. Okay, our sky is going to be super similar to the forefront of the snow, grabbing a little bit of that Payne's Gray since winter skies tend to be a little bit more in the gray family, gray blue family. And now with a lot of water and paint, on, well, not too much paint, but mostly water on my brush, I would even recommend switching to a bigger brush if you have it. Oops, let's make up a little bit more. Go ahead and put some in bigger amounts, leave little pieces of white on the paper. That could be where the clouds are. Just working a side to side circular motion here. I'll add a few more. Again, that looks just like it's kind of clouds in the background. And really great um, to be able to do that with watercolor. And I'll just grab a little bit more to help show a little shadow and some right there. Just add a little bit more depth. Okay, let me add a little bit of snow up front on our tree. So here I have my blue proof white and I'm actually going to use a little bit of a bigger brush, size three, and have quite a bit on my brush. And I'll just use that and Mine's not actually dry, or maybe the sky kind of came over the top of it. But I just wanted to kind of dab and overlay that, and that's what's going to show these snowy branches. Create that next layer. We'll do some that kind of overlap where the roof line is. And again, working our way down. Like that. Okay, and feel free to add this snow technique to other parts. Again, if you feel like you need it a little bit more detail on this tree here, you totally can do that. Just add it a little bit there. If you want to show some in the forefront, just take that and run it right over some of the dark areas that you painted, just to give a little texture. Alrighty, so there we have our snowy cabin scene, uh, winter scene. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think that one turned out really pretty. I love the red popping against the greens and the blues. Uh, please post your paintings if you are participating in all 12 days. Um, tag me at Windswept Design Studio on Instagram and I will watch for your entries. And uh, again, thanks so much for being here and happy late belated Thanksgiving.